our panel will be moderated by Mr. Anand, uh, the CEO and, managing director. CEO and Managing Director of Hitachi Solutions. Let's get into the session, sir. No, it's your choice. I'll use the caller mic. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anand. I work for Hitachi Solutions India. And uh, our story of existence is about two years from now. Uh, uh, sorry, it's, it's two years. And uh, we have built this organization purely on the basis of innovation and making a difference to business. Today in the panel, I have uh, a few eminent people uh, with me. Dr. Anand Chandrasekhar. Anand? Dr. Krishna, Dr. Suresh Kumar from uh, PSG and uh, Krishna Kumar from Stanchart Scope. All of us have a common theme. The common theme is innovation and how we expect academia to respond to the needs of innovation. Because today we say make in India. Yes, make in India is important for us. We are making in India. All of us are. All of us aspire to expand. But there is, a, there is a big gap in our expectation and reality. Reality is what you can turn into a better scenario for us. We need more skills. We need business-ready skills. We need absolutely smart skills. And without that, the Make in India initiative is not going to be successful. So I would urge each of you from the academia in this audience to look at how you could support each of our companies and the rest of the companies who were represented this morning here in terms of making the innovative ideas and the making, making in India initiative successful. I will talk about what we are doing in India, some innovation that we are bringing about, but most importantly, I would like to talk about what we are doing to change the situation that we are facing. The situation is there is a complete lack of skills. Today, with pride, we say we have so many thousand engineering colleges. Yes, it's an accepted fact. We have so many thousand management schools. It's an accepted fact. How many of them are churning students who are ready to be deployed within a month or two after joining the company? How many? Any answers for that? Let me ask Anand. Anand, you are in the industry. You are suffering for want of skills. Can you deploy an engineer within one month? How much time do you need? So uh, the person, one of my recent hires, the one person I was able to actually deploy almost instantly, uh, I helped guide his BTEC project because he, he studied under my mentor uh, when I was a student. That, that's the only person I've ever been able to actually get ready on day one. Okay. Otherwise, it's a minimum of six to nine months of gestation, right? It, I guess it depends on the, uh, the skill set that you're, uh, you're looking for. But yeah, but, but if you look at the IT sector, yeah, six yeah. to nine months is, is an average gestation. I would guess so. Dr. Suresh Kumar, what has been your experience in this? Uh, hiring people that to inquire but to, that to for a startup is a challenging task, with which all the startups are facing. And uh, these companies in Coimbatore also face getting an entry level and also at the mid level and the senior positions. Excellent. Amidst this, people are doing a good job. Sure. And uh, how about you, Krishna Kumar? You come from a different uh, area though. Yeah, I come from finance. <clears throat> Even in finance, we find a minimum of six months for a person to really contribute. So from the education, from the day of contribution, minimum it takes six months of training. Sure. So six months, six to nine months of minimum gestation. Look at the cost the IT company has to bear for having that employee on its rolls. How much does a trainee engineer make? Three to four lakhs a year? Maybe. Two lakhs, six months. You look at thousands of engineers who get churned and go into companies like TCS or HCL or Wipro or even my company. The amount that is locked by virtue of not being able to deploy someone is humongous. What are we doing to change this? I think it's a collective thought process. 
It is a collective decision that is required in this country to make things better. Hitachi, at Hitachi, we have made things a little better by doing certain things on our own. I'll talk about that in a bit. Just to give you a snapshot of Hitachi, Hitachi is a Fortune 100 company, Fortune 38 as per the last ranking, and uh, close to $100 billion in revenue, and significant employee base, and very global facing. It will be news to you, Hitachi's IT portfolio is about 24 billion in size. It's, it's one of the biggest in the world. And I come from the business solutions group, which primarily focuses on business applications. I will talk about that as well. Some accolades that we have got, purely because of innovation, nothing else. This, I think some of our earlier speakers have already spoken this morning. There is a tectonic shift happening in the industry. Market dynamics are changing. Everyone seems to be talking of mobility, Everyone seems to be talking about social, cloud, big data analytics. These are four mantras, smack. If you don't know smack, you will get smacked. That is, you know, that is the way industry is going to be. And how are we geared to address this? I'm not very sure if we are geared at all. So what Hitachi is doing in each of the areas, we have selected very specific areas for innovation, financial services, healthcare, we are looking at smarter governance. Everyone today talks of smart cities. We are talking of smarter cities. Because we cannot do away with the existing cities. We need to do something to better our own cities. We are talking of smarter education. And of course, manufacturing is the main, main theme for Hitachi. Hitachi was founded on the pillars of manufacturing. We are innovating considerably around each of these verticals today. And all of these are on the Microsoft stack. Of course, these can be applied in the context of any technology platform. Digital transformation, yes, make in India, great, great theme. I support Prime Minister's uh, intent to do that, and we are, you know, we are doing that as well, though we started a year before make in India was announced. So we are growing big time in terms of outsourcing work from the globe and executing in India. It's been a phenomenal growth we have had. But this growth or this transformation in India underscores the need for skills as well. The skills are, need to be, are to be oriented around new ideas. It needs passion. It doesn't require an engineer who's just come out of the college, I have done my engineering, I will do my job. No, the times have changed. You must have heard from some speakers here or in earlier events. Industry is today looking at non-linear growth. No longer are the times of linear growth where you have 100 million of extra revenue coming, you have 100,000 people being added. No. I think in the next two to three years, you'll find that that will get cut by a fifth or probably four-fifth will be cut. Only a fifth will remain. So which means for 100 million more of revenue, instead of adding 100,000 people, you will see people adding about 1,000 or 1,500 people or maybe 2,000 people. That is non-linear growth. How does that come? Because of vertical solutions because of innovation in each of the segments. So passion is extremely important. Right orientation. So I talked about six to nine months of gestation. How can I compress that to just one to two months? That is benefit for the IT company. Innovation, I spoke about that as well. Most important, sustainability. If you look at certain skill sets which are rare, the universe in India for those skill sets is about 3,000 or 4,000 people. And you have about 500 companies trying to compete with each other for those skills. Does it make sense to poach from company A and employ in company B? No. Industry must wake, wake up to this requirement and look at sustainability. And it's, it's a responsibility on you as academia to collaborate with industry to make this a sustainable model. So cloud, social, mobility, analytics, I spoke about. These are areas that you need to focus on in terms of your curriculum as well. And most importantly, I see the students from today, today's world, bringing a new perspective. When they are, giving the, you know, when they are given the right environment and the right guidance to work. So we have recruited hundreds of engineers over the past uh, 18 months. We have found that there are sparks within them the right environment has resulted in at least two solutions being built by these engineers 
in the first six months of their coming to the company. So can't we get this incubated at the institute level itself? Definitely a food for thought. Cause for concern, I don't think I should reiterate on this. I don't think I should try and reflect any of you in poor light. But nevertheless, this is the state of reality today. The, the content of the programs, I'm pretty sure my colleagues will agree as well, is, is not adequate. Inadequate or irrelevant involvement of industry. I see only paper MOUs. I see institutes saying, you know, I have a MOU with X, Y, and Z. I don't think anything has been done. It's very theory-centric knowledge, no practical uh, reality coming in. Little business involvement in the curriculum. Can't the curriculum be redrafted to bring in that business context? Inadequate focus on innovation. My colleagues are going to talk about this anyway. Let me not uh, steal their thunder. Lack of articulation skills for globalized needs and multilingual skills. Today, gone are the days where you'll say that only English-speaking geographies are going to outsource. I see a lot of opportunity coming from Japan as an alternative to China. I see a lot of opportunities coming from Europe as well. Linguistic proficiency is going to be very important as well. So what is it we have done to change the way things are? We chose three institutions, or two institutions rather, in the engineering stream in uh, Tamil Nadu, Rajalakshmi Engineering and uh, RMK in Chennai, because we are headquartered there. It was easy for us to get this started. We invested in practitioner-led incubation. So in the seventh semester, we introduce the relevant program, which is relevant for us for sustainability, and which the institution also sees as relevant for its uh, credibility as well. And between July and December, our practitioner actually imparts education directly to the students. And we contain the batch of students to about 50 people in each institute. Because the, the larger the number, the difficult to manage. It's very specialized training. And Microsoft has been kind enough to give the software platform for free for enabling the training. That is something we have facilitated. And then by September or October, we are able to differentiate between the good and the, and, and the not so good student. And we offer to about 40 to 50% of that batch to absorb them into the company. So the training gets over by December, the six month module. In January, we have the students come over to our office and do a three month internship. And this is on live projects under the guidance of the uh, practitioner and the other uh, team members as well. So with this, we are able to get about nine months of incubation time right at the college stage. There is no additional expenditure for the college. There is no e additional expenditure for the student. There is no real expenditure from my perspective as well, except that I need to dedicate practitioner time, get the person to travel to the location and impart the relevant education student. And we replicated the same thing in the management school as well. So we have two management schools which are catchment for us. Don't think IT is all about technology. IT is all about business. Business aligned IT is today's context. So we need good management graduates with business analysis and functional skills as well to support IT. So we have done a combination of these. The programs are yielding excellent results. We are stepping into the third year of our existence and the third year of our program with Academia as well. I will leave these slides you know, with, uh, with the ICTAC team for distribution to you. I'm not going to cover the slide in detail. Some Academia speak. So what we do, so we address foundation technologies at the technical uh, level. .NET is what we are looking at because we are Microsoft. And business communications is something we focus on. We look at business applications in terms of CRM, ERP, business intelligence, and uh, SharePoint collaboration. And we also incubate talent in the areas of SMAC today, which is around social listening and analytics, digital marketing, business-centric analytics, cloud enablement, mobility, and more importantly, vertical solutions. I spoke about two of our vertical solutions getting built by fresh engineers. They dug in into the vertical, did an analysis of what the vertical needs. They build the solution. 
And today I'm looking to license some of these to some of the global customers across the world. The way forward for us, very successful. We are looking to add more colleges to our incubation uh, program. We are spreading into Telangana and Chhattisgarh as well because talent is there everywhere. Functional talent, we are expanding. Uh, we are looking at even introducing programs that will encourage innovation at the college level. So we want to come up with some awards and some financial support for the colleges in our catchment to innovate and develop solutions for us. We are looking at introducing in the MBA program uh, the courses that I talked about, social listening and analytics. And we are aligning with one of the most progressive state governments in India to enable an academy for sustainable business uh, friendly talent. We will uh, notify this very shortly. So this is pretty much what Hitaji is doing, making a difference. And I think the quality of uh, people has been tremendously good to the extent 50% of my batch has already traveled to the US and come back after working on engagements. That is the level of confidence we have for a one year or a two year engineer who has passed out of college. It speaks well about the program. Let me uh, stop with this and invite uh, Krishna Kumar to talk about what uh, Stan Chard is doing in innovation and what academia can do for them. Okay. Thank you.